These guys appear to have insulated boots. Think I understand why they're all barefoot now. Ooh, bacon. Greetings, Tasty Morsels. It's Reverse BLT. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching Andor Episode 8, which is entitled Narkina 5. I'm assuming that is the prison planet or, you know, base or whatever that uh, Cassian was sentenced to at the end of the previous episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just been having a, not the best luck lately. We got a look at... Uh, the the oppression that you know the uh the heavy hand of the empire uh is dealing out in the aftermath of the uh aldani heist and it, it was funny because uh you know i think uh who's it mira was saying like you know we're playing right into the rebels hands and it's exact it's 100 true it's like it should be obvious to all of them that uh <laughs> that this is exactly what the rebellion wanted you know it's like how do you get people on your side you're not going to get them on on your side if it if life under the empire is basically the same as life was under the republic but these huge crackdowns especially as as you know broad in scope as they were and increasing the sentences to absurd lengths and things like that yeah you know that's going to start getting people grumbling who otherwise wouldn't have cared so all the Empire's doing right now is strengthening the position of the Rebellion with the ordinary people uh, under their control. So, yeah, it's pretty stupid, but also predictable, because that's generally how Empires respond to any challenges to their authority, is by cracking down extremely hard and just creating more Rebels. <laughs> I, I talked uh, at the end of uh, the last episode in my, in, you know, in the little after part that hardly any of you ever watched. That's called passive aggression <laughs> about how um the theme of this particular arc appears to at least to me the deep theme seems to be uh imprisonment and like not just like you know obvious forms of imprisonment where you're actually going to jail but the ways in which you know uh social structures and economic structures and everything else the, the lives that we lead uh, you know, our expectations even for ourselves, how they all can create kind of prisons that we end up stuck in. Prisons for the body and for the mind. And uh, I'm curious to see how they carry that theme forward. I think every char every major character represents it to a degree. And uh, so it's, it's very interesting to get a lot of different perspectives. I teared up at uh, Cassian's goodbye with uh, his surrogate mom, uh, Marva. And I, you know, writer brain tells me we're, that we're probably going to have one more reunion between them. And it will probably be uh, at the time of Marva's death. And I think that'll be the final sort of catalyst that pushes Cassian into the rebellion all the way. Because we see how she's throwing herself into rebellion now. Um, one of the people who, who basically have been radicalized by... Uh, I mean, she was probably slowly being radicalized anyway, and which isn't surprising considering how she seemed when we first met her. Um, but like the crackdowns that the Empire has uh, started, she's a perfect example of the kind of like how that is going to end up creating more rebels because it was that that pushed her off the fence, you know, uh, into basically like taking an active role. So it, it just makes sense to me story-wise that. The next time we encounter her will basically be her giving her life for this rebellion and we've already got Cassian with the manifesto from the one kid who died for the rebellion and that will just be you know a continuation of that thread of people sort of leaving a legacy to him to carry forward in in terms of like fighting the Empire of course on the flip side his sort of mirror opposite we have someone who had for his whole life basically benefited from the system, um, especially under the Empire of recent, but then also fell under the same system, you know? And is currently kind of stuck in this limbo, his imprisonment being like, you know, the corporate, the dead corporate life that he has now as a just like some sort of a functionary doing repetitive monotonous work that he hates. And that's now the prison he's trapped in because of his failure. So their two paths are definitely going to dovetail again. I don't know exactly how yet, but I suspect that um, 
that they'll kind of do a thing where they kind of cross like this, so... They'll find ways to make their situations more directly mirror each other. So it might even be possible that by the end of this, Karn himself will be in prison. Uh, like an actual physical prison, not just the, the prison of monotony and everything that he's in right now. Yeah, I'm also finding, uh, I mentioned her before, but I'm finding Miro to be very fascinating and watching her attempt to actually kick the, the complacent empire into, <laughs> into actually uh, noticing and doing something about this uh, growing rebellion before it's too late. Oh, and also, of course, um, uh, Vel has basically been ordered to find and uh, exterminate Cassian because he's a loose end that um, Luthen is worried about. Oh yeah, Mon Mothma confided in an old uh, childhood friend of hers, not not 100%, but basically told him enough to understand that she is part of this growing rebellion and she needs his help to gain access to her family funds. And I worry that she may have trusted the wrong person because there are, clearly the Empire is already Suspicious enough of her, they have, uh, you know, you know, plants around her, watching her all the time. What better person to use to finally get the information you need to take a suspected rebel down than an old friend that she trusts, you know? So, I, yeah, I don't trust him at all. I think he's, uh, I think he's working for the Empire. But anyway, yeah, let's find out what Narkina 5 is and how awful Cassian's six-year stint is going to be on that place. Wondering if the audio has a problem right now, or if they really did just make the theme sound really discordant. All planet. There is Pada. Arcana 5. What? What's that? Get to your transport. Next. What is that? What's the Arcana 5? I'm a tourist. So this must be part of that whole thing where they were talking to the supervisors, where they're constantly harping on their quotas for uh, incarceration. They just, like, round people up just to put them in prison. Why the Emperor wants something like that, though... It makes no sense to me. He has to know all he's doing is creating more problems. Especially considering the man can see the freaking future. <laughs> shoes off, sandals, everything on the floor, touch it in. Come on, move it, let's face, let's go. That's actually kind of smart. Not 100% sure why they have them take their shoes off. I have a busy day. Tell me. What's not in Lieutenant Blevins' report that I need to know? I have no idea. I wasn't allowed to see the report. You signed it. I was given no choice. She seems surprised by that. How did you get this high up, Miro, without knowing that they force people to sign things without letting them see it? And then what? Identify Axis. They escaped together. It's the first best lead we've had. Supervisor Miro has convinced me that this Axis has been nimble in spreading his activities across the galaxy. And no, we don't know who he is, nor do we know the scope of our problem. The little we are aware of is already troubling. Varix was a mistake. It's the first one he's made. Drill down, find Andor, and get a hunt started. Well, she's definitely convinced her boss because he, he stepped up uh, and put his neck on the line to back up her, uh, her play. I'm noticing that the flooring is all metal. These guys appear to have insulated boots. Think I understand why they're all barefoot now. I'm sure some, if not all of you, are wondering how we risk standing before you without weapons. Well, that didn't seem quite like a electrical reaction. At least not if they were being shot through the feet. Ten bucks says you're wrong. Here's what we'll do, Mr. Khan. You'll stop filing requests for Andor. Anticipating that, I will inform the Bureau of Standards that you were of service to the Empire today. I was a good deputy inspector. I solved a double murder and found the killer in two days. It was overly ambitious, yes, but time was slipping away and the opportunity was real. Okay, I know, I see what you're doing now. You're asking for a job. Can one ever be too aggressive in preserving order? Man, he's dangerous. Can one ever be too aggressive and maintain war? It could be a valuable asset going forward. Raise the alarm one more time, and it won't be me you're speaking to. 
forget this happened. <laughs> prisons. They're all in different kinds of prisons. New man ready on 5-2-D, requesting unit override. Copy that. Uh, coming up. That's not good enough. This was on the schedule. Can't just not turn up. He'll be here. Override engaged. 5-2, you have the floor. We've got other deliveries waiting. Ice hmm. front. Let's just get him out on the ring. Ready on the floor? <laughs> Looks good. I like how Cassian is doing his best to observe as much as possible about how they do things. They do have some slight bits of, uh, it, you know, irregularity in their scheduling and everything, thanks to some people not picking up their uh, slack. I wonder if uh, that's planned. Like, maybe there are some people already infiltrated into this uh, place to try and help uh, certain prisoners escape or help certain prisoners get taken out, perhaps. Seven tables per room. Seven men, each table. My I was just about to say, it sounds like Andy Circus. It is Andy Circus. Injured, you talk to me. Problems with another inmate, I will know before you do. Losing hope, your mind, keep it yourself. Don't ever slow up my line. Table five. What you're seeing is Jeff Bezos' wet dream. He would love to have Amazon run like this. <laughs> If you've ever worked at Amazon, which I have, you'll understand. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Hit. I'm Gembos. Welcome. Zo. Targa. Ula. Ham. This is Melchie. I'm not going to remember any of these people's names. <laughs> right, new guy. Prepare to fry. Keith. What? What's his name? Work! Work what? I mean, he doesn't know what he's doing. Is there any training? So, some of you guys have very helpfully reminded me uh, about the fact that the Death Star is being constructed and stuff like that. And it really makes, adds another dimension to what on earth is going on with them constantly trying to get as many prisoners as possible. Seeing as we're seeing that they're pretty much all being used as labor. So it's their way of getting this these big giant secret projects completed as quickly as possible. But the thing is, stuff like this, you know, it will, probably another reason why they're using prisoners, though, is you, you start rushing construction of things, people get injured and die. Especially when you're not giving them adequate training. What on earth are those? The senator is pitching politics, not charity. Saving the empire from the emperor. <laughs> Do you remember Theron at 15? Oh, that's not. The Academy Firebrand. Please. How things change. <laughs> sort of the worms that release some sort of psychotropic or something. Is that going to be important for later? Leader. Uh, we've met. Indeed. You're here all the time now. Learning to love Coruscant. Your father's looking for you. You're drinking squigs. Oh, I've lost my taste for it. It's disgusting. Uh, that's the point. I should find Dad. Nice to see you again. What about the money I've moved already? Why do I feel... Nah, I'm gonna shelve that thought for, for later. <laughs> oh, I was just coming to get you. Parents said you were hoarding the squids. I always forget your chandelier at heart. And I always forget how sweet you are when you're looking for those. <laughs> this is one of the big reasons I don't ever want to go into politics. Constant wheeling and dealing to get anything done. Leave it down! Keep it down! Keep what down? I don't hear anybody making any noise. He's talking to somebody across the way with hand... with a sign language. Surprised they can see... that he can read that from that far away. You can get as much as you want. They like us healthy and fueled. Don't worry, you learn to eat it. Yuck. When it gets taste with their food. Top table wins flavor. Last place gets fried. Wow. Almost literal carrot and stick. That is your tab. Tab? What do you mean? Number of days left? Or? Don't ever look at the number. Double, triple, it doesn't matter. Hey! You're until they don't want you anymore. Enough! Get straight with that. Mouth straight! Things are getting it now, it's dreaming. Those days are over. You know? 30 seconds on that. 30 seconds, that's a very short amount of time. Tighten up! Hot floor!
Well, that's effective. I still don't quite understand it, though, because, like, like I said, you know, the way their bodies were contorting didn't quite make sense to me for an electrified floor. So it's got to be some other weird technology. I'm always happy to see a bunch of different aliens in a scene in uh, Star Wars. Though it is also smart to show that most of the people up here in the upper levels of Coruscant are human. Because there's a lot of uh, human-centric jingoism. Maybe that's not exactly the right word. In the uh, Empire. And it, honestly in the Republic as well. And this would be the part I would hate the most about if I ever went to prison. It's the complete and utter lack of privacy. What are these? Of two. They look like they're meant to move, so are they part of battle droids or something? Ready up, ready up. Oh, hang on, hang on. You okay? Pin jam. So, help me. Yeah, come. Someone's gonna get hurt. You just taking a breather. Come on, guys. You got a chance of winning the shift today. Shame to waste it. Oh, the music is getting all tense. Like, it's even making us, like, get invested in them winning the shift. She has pain in the knee. The doctor was here yesterday. Your breathing sounds weak. I heard wheezing. She's obsessed with troopers. She fell trying to pry open the old roots floodgate. Is she gonna flush them out? No. She wanted to see if the tunnel under the hotel was still open. Why? Why do you think? So the rebellion can sneak in and take them by surprise. Oh, hey, Val. Where did you go? I was the big one. Hey, Cinta. Where were you? I was about to come and look in. Cold now. You guys not have microwaves in the Star Wars universe? There's a room to rent around the corner. They have a sign up. You can't just stay here. I can. Alone? Two of us would draw too much attention. Who would you say you are? Maybe I'm a rich girl. Running away from her family. That's cold. Hmm. That's who you were, huh? I told you up front. The struggle will always come first. We take what's left. I'm guessing she's gonna try to uh create a romantic relationship with um the big guy who she keeps eyeing him. You know, uh, you're sending out a signal that can be easily detected. She might have a lead. Yeah, more likely it's the ISB working her radio. Are you guessing? And you're slipping! It's Andor. Knowing he's out there, knowing me. Not knowing what he knows. I'm not slipping, Leia. I've just been hiding for too long. It's all different now. We're going loud. Vulnerability is inevitable. I'm not slipping. I think you are a little bit. I think your eagerness to be out there is affecting your judgment. Where are you going, buddy? Are you about to, like, deliberately jump out into the red floor, buddy? Will it kill you if you're on it too long? Okay, so it is electrical? Well, duh. What's going on? It's Packyard. I'm not sure they're all over it. Because you sent out signals yesterday, silly. Your desperation has compromised you. He took Pack in last night. Where? The hotel. He never came home. It's your fault. Colleen! Fix Colleen. Run! Get her! <laughs> You need to get off the street. What is Segura Milo? An actual rebellion military installation? Oh, my friend. The garrison at Aldani. Was that you? I was just about to ask ah. you the same thing. I was wondering when he was going to show up. So before he got all horribly injured, I wonder if that's going to happen in this uh, series. People who agree Betting it will. Come all this way to scold me. Might not be season one, though. Whatever our final version of success looks like, there's no chance any of us can make it real on our own. We need the Empire to help. 
We need them angry. We need them coming down hard. Oppression breeds rebellion. Kriegen needs their support. I'm not for hire. Think of it. Think of Spellhouse in flames. Neither of you could do it on your own, but together... Krieger's a separatist. My pays a neo-republican. The Gorman Front. The Partisan Alliance. Sectorist. Human cultist. Galaxy partitionist. They're lost. I like it. All of them lost. I like that they're pointing out how the rebellion was made up of all these different factions that had completely different goals and ideas of what the future should look like. I've never really known. What are you? I'm a coward. I'm a man who's terrified the Empire's power will grow beyond the point where we can do anything to stop it. I'm the one who says we'll die with nothing if we don't put aside our petty differences. Petty? I am the only one with clarity of purpose. <laughs> well, anarchy is a seductive concept. A bit of a luxury, I'd argue, to a man who's hiding in cold caves and begging for spare parts. <laughs> no sale today, Luther. Good luck with Anto Krieger. The hotel. Whence no one returns. You're a very strange young man, aren't you? She's on her way up. Would you like us to clear the room? No. I want her to see him. What are you doing? Get him out of here. <laughs> Quickly. You two, with me. Now! Yeah, she's excellent at stagecraft. She's already sitting up at Good Cop, Bad Cop, too. Because she can be like, oh, I'm so sorry you had to see that. Hello, Bex. No, she didn't even bother. Okay. So just just the threat, not the uh, inviting hand. Yeah, those, those are droid parts, I think, like battle droids. So I guess this place isn't building stuff for the Death Stars. <laughs> Yeah, definitely continuing that theme of imprisonment. We have obviously the the direct textual prison angle on Narkina, but we've definitely got our more metaphorical imprisonment going on with other characters too. It's interesting watching uh, Marva sort of like do her best to sort of try to rebel um, in her own little ways. I just really love how the series is showing how the how rebellions actually grow. You know, like um, we're, we're seeing all these people whose lives are just being completely disrupted and being ground into the dirt by the Empire, and each one of them is becoming, you know, is potentially becoming more and more radicalized against the Empire as a result. And that really is that's one of the biggest reasons why rebellions happens. Because, you know, I'll tell you right now, people like, for instance, that garrison that got put there. You put a garrison somewhere that you control, you're moving in, and everything you have that garrison do is to help the people, they'll welcome you. They may, you know, be resistant in certain ways at first. They may, like, be reluctant to trust you at first, but you win them over. And then they want you to stay. You come in with a heavy hand, crushing opposition, forcing everybody to conform and to assimilate and all this other stuff. Pretty soon you're going to find bombs where you sleep, you know? <laughs> Empires in general don't learn that lesson very easily, you know? They, they always seem to have this idea of like, you know, we are the superior ones, we are the ones who matter, and we're going to go in there and we're going to force everyone to bend to our will. And that's why they, that's the one of the biggest reasons why they eventually fail. You look at empires that were successful for a long time, you'll see they did had a pretty strong practice of allowing at least some decent level of autonomy of the people that they conquered and, you know, giving them actual benefits of being part of this empire rather than just being used 
and crushed. There aren't too many examples of it, but like uh, usually you can tell the ones that did that because they lasted the longest. They are not found. I don't think that Karn's gonna let it go. Uh, he's, he's just, he's a classic character who, you know, the archetype of the dog with a bone, he just can't help it. He's gonna have to keep trying to get Andor. Uh, I think all he's gonna do is he's gonna, he's gonna shift his uh, methods. You know, but I think right now his main goal is to try to somehow get involved in uh, Miro's investigation. It's possible she may reach back out to him. I don't think so, though, because I think she also just sees herself as being so far above uh, people on Karn's level that, uh, you know, she's just not going to bother with him now that she got the information she thinks she needed out of him. That's another problem the Empire has is, you know, the whole... Um, arrogance thing it goes from top to bottom you know it's like every level looks down on anyone who you know is below them and just it, it's easy for them to dismiss them to a degree i would say it's funny because she's less dismissive than a lot of the people we've seen which is part of the reason why she's being successful in 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 what she's doing right now but she still has it she still has that tendency to kind of look over the people below her you know at least if they're more than a couple levels below her. So that might be her downfall ultimately, but we'll see. She is similar, obviously, to Karn in that they both are, you know, dogs with bones right now. It's just that um, she, I think, is being a little savvier about how she's going about uh, digging up her bone. <laughs> you know? That sounded dirty. The prison that Cassian is in is very interesting. Uh, I often harp on the Empire for tons of terrible uh, decisions and just like short-sightedness uh, when they plan things. But that prison system that, that, is, that they've got implemented on Narkina 5 is pretty well thought out. It has a lot, a, you know, it's very good at, you know, for control. It's very good for not just it's just your more overt physical control, but the way that they're using the elements of the physical control to create what I always say, you guys, you've probably heard me say it in a couple different reactions. The most powerful leash is the one you put in the mind, not on, not on, around the neck. And the, their approach creates this, like, reinforcement psychologically that makes the person put a leash in their own mind. You know, you've got obviously the stick with um, the fear of touching the wrong places at the wrong time. So you stay in line. You 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 do what you're told. Um, but also they've got a reward system that further encourages people to do what they're told and to try to work as fast as possible and as accurately as possible and all these things. So it just, you, you fall into a cycle, you know, and the person probably, you know, you had the one guy advise uh, him to just not pay attention to the number, but I would say that probably over time, the average person would just stop paying attention to it anyway they'd fall into such a routine that they would just they become machines themselves you know they, they don't even notice anymore it's just their life now and then of course doing the practice of making sure that your people who are in charge on a day-to-day -day, you know um, basis are also prisoners you know so the table supervisor or you know facilitator however you want to look at it is obviously a prisoner the floor supervisor is a prisoner. The only time they ever see the guards is when they're bringing someone in or taking someone out. So it's always the prisoners who who um, are involved, which is another layer of incentive. You know, the the prisoners who follow the rules the best, who work the hardest, etc., get this extra level of authority that probably comes with additional perks we don't even know about. Credit where credit's due, that the Empire actually thought this one through when, when it came to creating this prison. Also very interesting seeing uh, how Vel and Cinta, so different sort of like approaches to the Rebellion, affect them individually and as a couple. You know, how like Cinta is much more cold and committed to the actual, you know, to, to what must be done. Whereas Vel is a little bit more um, emotional and, and uh, invested in them personally, you know, and is probably not willing to sacrifice as much as Cinta is. So yeah, yeah, I thought that that's pretty cool because when we were introduced to Cinta, we were told 
she's basically the coldest one here she's the hardest one here and it didn't feel right because of her behavior but we're seeing how true it is over time i actually really like that um that they that they did it that way it kind of like gave us a sort of like um I don't know, almost like, oh, is that like a sort of like a double subversion in a way? You know, because you always want to show, don't tell, but we we hear about it first, so we're told first without seeing any of it. Um, but then you flip it on his head because she seems so much like she's going to end up being that, uh, you know, stereotype of, um, you know, the old fashioned stereotype of, well, she's a woman, so she's going to be kind and gentle and all that stuff. It's like, no, she really is. The hard case. She is the <laughs> she's the one who's gonna shoot you in the, in the back of the head if if she thinks it's necessary to achieve the mission. You know. So yeah, I really like that. Is that like a fetish thing? It's great emotional uh, work. You know, it's a lot of a lot of good uh, a lot of good potential for some dramatic meat. It, the the tension between Vel and Cinta over how to how to be rebels. You know. It was really cool seeing Saw Gerrera um, before he got all horribly injured. And like I was saying during the episode, like I really like that the show is pointing out how, you know, this rebellion and in general, most rebellions are built out of coalitions of people who have very, very different ideas of what they want to achieve and why they are against whatever the power structure is. And that still have to find a way to come together and you know work side by side in order to topple their common enemy but there's always this looming question in the background the whole time what happens after if they succeed what happens after because we saw how like for instance saul has genuine hatred for some of the other factions of the rebellion and obviously some of those factions are going to hate him they're going to hate each other so after they topple the empire, they will turn their eyes on one another, you know? And then what happens? You have civil war that, I mean, granted, a rebellion is basically a civil war. So, but you have a continuation of a civil war in which it devolves into the different factions fighting each other next. Can they maintain it long enough to build some sort of new government, etc.? You know, I really like that we're getting to delve into this. This is very complex for star wars and um i think the interesting thing is that yeah star wars is a, is a universe of stories made for children but obviously we all are adults who started with those stories for children so it's nice that we have at least a corner uh of stories of uh, you know in the a corner of the universe in which we can have stories that are more adult for those of us who have grown up with star wars I, i'm really really fond of that i am loving this series as you can probably tell i can't wait to see how this particular arc closes out let me know what you guys thought of the episode what you think of this arc so far what you think of the series so far what your speculation is as always if you are further ahead than i am uh make sure you use a spoiler warning and some space if you're going to talk about stuff that we haven't gotten to yet. And as always, do your best to stay safe and be well. I will see you for the next one, which I'm about to watch right now. And may the Force be with you. Bye-bye. I've really known. What are you? I'm a snag. I'm a snag. I'm a snag. I'm a slithery little snake and snake.